She's just weird. She has weird little antics. I can't imagine life without these dogs. Obviously, Pongo I've had for a really long time, and he's been through a whole lot of different situations. He's a miniature dachshund. He goes by Humphrey, Humps, Lump. He's got a lot of nicknames. Uh, watch this. Run. Oh, God. Stay. Look around. Nailed it. Hey there. How's it going? I'm Allie Hills. I'm a YouTuber and a musician. This is Noodle. She's the best cat in the entire world. This whole episode's about her. Welcome to Meet the Pets. I, I feel like she's not a cat. I feel like she's like another person. Or I don't even know how to just, not even a person. She's literally just all the joy that I could ever possibly want. And she's just always there for me, always wants to cuddle, always wants to play. And she's like the best. I got Noodle about six years ago. I was dating someone at the time and we lived together with two cats. And she was like, maybe we should get a dog. So we went to the shelter just to like look and see what kind of dogs we both liked. And we walked in and literally the first glass, the amount of cat hair, <laughs> the literally the first glass case had Noodle in it. Her name was Yara at the time and I like instantly fell in love with her. I was obsessed with her and my ex was like, uh, we are here for dogs. You, you, we cannot get another cat. And so we went home. I don't even remember looking at dogs to be quite honest, but we went home and for about a month, every time I could bring her up, I'd say, oh, Yara would like this movie. Yara would love this blanket. Like I just would not shut up about her. And so about a month later, she said, let's go back to the shelter and just see, and then we'll talk about it if, if you like her. And so we went there, first glass case, she's not there. And I freaked out and I was like, hi, is Yara there? And they were like, oh yeah, we moved her. She's over here. I was like, I'm gonna adopt her right now. And they were like, that's so crazy that you want to adopt her because in the month that you had last been here until now, she actually got adopted and then was brought back to the shelter. If I had come back any sooner, I would have thought she was gone forever and I think that's why we're meant to be. Well, I Googled Yara and the first thing that I saw, it said, it, it stood for wound. And so um, I was like, maybe we should change it. And I don't know, she just kind of looked like a long little noodle because she was very, very skinny when I got her, so. That's her name. <laughs> I feel like she's a lot like me. She's like really great when it's just the two of us. And I feel like that's when she really like lets her guard down and she's so outgoing, so fun to be around. But with strangers, she's a little little more reserved. But once you get to know her and she opens up, oh, she's she's a she's a fun time. <laughs> Unless you really know me, I'm I, you're probably gonna think I'm shy or something like that. So <laughs> um, she definitely opens up a lot and she's just weird. She has weird little antics and I feel like we're similar in that way. We're both a little strange. <laughs> Getting deep here, but I would definitely not be here if it weren't for this cat. She has been with me through thick and thin and I literally couldn't think of a better support system than this cat right here. So I owe her literally everything. I'd be in trouble if Noodle had a Twitter account and could tweet about me because she'd have a lot of dirt on me. She sees the sides of me that no one sees because they're frankly, it'd be weird. It'd be too weird, but I, I do some strange things living alone and she has to witness it all. She'd probably say I'm too loud. Why is this talking to herself again? I don't know. <laughs> Will she shut up? I, I really talk like all day long, but just to her and myself. I make pop music, indie pop music, and I'm actually currently working on a few singles and an EP, so that's coming out this year. I make my music in my apartment. She helps when she literally just jumps on the keyboard and you just hear her. That's her contribution to my music, but yeah, no, she, she always is helping out. <laughs> Not actually. The thing I love most about what I do is that I am in control of my entire life. I get to choose when I work and when I don't, but I, I really like the luxury of just being able to do everything from my house and do everything myself. I'm really picky when it comes to certain things, so I like to do everything myself, which is quite a burden, but the fact that I get to do all the creative bits of making music and videos is, is really nice. Being on the internet is actually a really hard thing to do, especially for how long I've been doing it, almost a decade now. It's been an 
interesting experience, but I've just always wanted to stay true to myself and like always be myself because I feel like that's how I started my career. So that's the only thing that really is, is what's keeping it going in the first place. So yeah, just being myself. So I do have my latest song that's out. It's called Whoa. Uh, I made it with Johnny Glenn. He's a good friend of mine and uh, go check it out. It's very edgy. <laughs> it's just more edgy than I would normally do, you know? All right, this is the pet challenge portion of the show. Noodle can't do any tricks, but we're gonna try. <laughs> Sniff. That's it? No, 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 no. She, she plays hide and go seek, so that's what she's actually doing right now. This is her trick. She's really good at it, actually. Oh God, oh gee, oh God. <laughs> Found her. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, watch this. Run. Oh God. Stay, look around. Nailed it. Well, that was the pet challenge. She's pretty talented, right? Right? You deserve this. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. I care a lot about the LGBTQ community, obviously because I'm in it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like to give back and you know do as much as I can because I am in a very privileged position and even just my entire coming out process has been extremely smooth and easy. So uh, for me, I'm really thankful to be able to have had that. So I just want to be able to like provide that for other people. And so, yeah, I like to focus on a little LGBTQ stuff because um, they deserve some representation. She has eaten something strange before. Quite an expensive meal, if you ask me. So about a month into adopting her, I was watching a movie with somebody and we had a low coffee table. And on that coffee table, we also had a platter of bacon wrapped scallops. And we realized one was missing. So we had two other cats at the time. So basically we just went around and tried to smell their all. <laughs> we tried to smell all their breath, even though they kind of all smelled like they ate the scallop. But uh, we figured out it was noodle. And then we realized that there was a toothpick inside of each bacon wrapped scallop. So 1 a.m. straight to the emergency room. I remember it like it was yesterday. I did not go to sleep the entire night. She had an emergency operation. It was so expensive, but it was worth it. And also now she never eats f food that's not hers. She will only eat food that's in her bowl now. So I think she learned her lesson. It was really expensive. <laughs> well, this is how they actually normally are. My clothes are always, con like they're always covered in cat hair. I have people telling me on FaceTime, will you please change your sweatshirt because it's covered in cat hair. But if I'm not going anywhere, then why do I need to get rid of it, you know? She's been absolutely thriving in quarantine, having me there all the time because she never gets lonely now. Um, and now I feel weird even just like going to the grocery store because I'm leaving her for 20 minutes, but I think it's made our relationship a lot stronger and it's gonna be a harsh reality when I have to leave my house again <laughs> and we can't spend 24 seven together. Like I'm, I'm scared to like, go on tour, you know, because I don't want to leave her. I don't actually know what would happen in that case because I can't take her with me, but I am kind of scared for, for that to happen. Even when I go on vacations, like I need a picture every single day. I, I need to know what she's up to all of the time. But I, I would definitely be a pet owner if I didn't have this job. I genuinely don't know how people live alone without pets because what are you doing? What do you do? Just sit? You just sit? I'm confused. Oh, come here. I have a rather large tattoo in dedication of the love of my life. I got this because I love her that much. <laughs> Actually, I still wake up every morning and go, I need to get a noodle tattoo. And then I realize I have one, but I just want, I just want my whole body dedicated to her. I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed with this cat. <laughs> Coming up next. My other favorite way to spend time with the dogs is throwing the frisbee around. Pongo is obsessed. As you can tell these uh, have already been chewed through. He's ready to go. My name is Monica Xamet. I'm an Olympic fencer. This is Pongo and Otto, and we're in Williamsburg, New York. My First dog's name is Pongo, my Dalmatian, and this is Oro, who I found in the streets of Peru, and I fell in love and I brought him home. My love for Dalmatians started from a young age. I grew up watching Disney movies, 
101 Dalmatians obviously had a whole bunch of puppies and I wanted a dog and a Dalmatian ever since then. The story of Oro is a long one and sometimes it makes me question my sanity. We had Pan American Games in Lima, Peru and then afterwards I went sightseeing and made the whole trek to Machu Picchu. This dog came up to me, sniffed my hand and then within I feel like 30 seconds he had his front paws in my lap and I fell in love and I couldn't imagine life without him and I jumped through a million hoops to bring him here but I don't regret it. Pongo is definitely a character. He's very, very intelligent. He has outsmarted me in the past. He's a goofball, trips over his own feet, but also a sweetheart. Otto's a little bit easier. He's uh, very scared, which makes sense. Obviously, he's in New York City versus Peru. Very different. He loves to play nonstop, very curious, and also a sweetheart. He's the one that gives kisses. Pongo doesn't. So Pongo's name, I feel like it's kind of easy if you know 101 Dalmatians movie. It was obvious to me what his name was going to be. For Oro, actually his first name was Balto, not Oro. I wanted to keep it in the whole Disney genre. However, I was talking to a bunch of Peruvians afterwards and they're like, well, why don't you give him a Spanish name? And my team had just won gold a few days ago. So I was like, okay, well, actually that name sounds pretty nice and I think it fits him quite well. Good job! So the way that I'm alike with Pongo is I'm very loyal to my circle. Because I, that's what I value in him. When it comes to Oro, I'm not afraid. I do like to do things that are spontaneous. Maybe that I give affection to those people near me, but I'm more standoffish to strangers. Actually, that's perfect. Truly, I can't imagine life without these dogs. Obviously, Pongo I've had for a really long time, and he's been through a whole lot of different situations. There was a moment I was battling depression, and I mean, it's like this dog knows. He knows if I'm in a good mood, in a bad mood, if I'm mad, sad. Sometimes I don't even realize my mood until I see him, like what's wrong? And then it comes to mind. I mean, there's nothing like coming home and having a dog cuddle up to you. In the morning, he comes over and licks your face. It just, I don't know, starts your day off on the right way. What do the dogs like most about me? I can't say I've ever thought of that question. Um, I would probably say that I feed them and I take them on walks if we're gonna be honest about this one. Yeah, is that it? Do you agree? Crazy story of what Pongo has done is he's actually a Marc Jacobs model. They reached out to me on Instagram to have him for a shoot. Everybody loved him. And then recently we had a photographer that's shot Vogue covers reach out to, for him to shoot a project. So this is the true celebrity. This is why you guys are really here. Pongo's definitely a diva. He thinks it's all about him. Look at him posing. He's like, get my good side. Always a star. The story of Oro really stands out is just his story of how the journey he had to make to come to America. And that whole thing was an experience. And now he has a roof over his head. He gets treats every single day. Pongo knows, I think, too many tricks at this point. It was almost boring to be teaching him as a puppy because he just picked things up like this. Good job. Just jump. Close. Speak. Good job. Odo knows a lot less tricks. He's a little bit harder to teach. Good job. It also doesn't help that whenever I'm giving him treats or rewarding him, Pongo wants to be doing the tricks at the same time. So you guys want to see my favorite trick? Pongo, bang! Very slow motion. Good job! Pongo is very intelligent, so my mom was saying when I was teaching him, she was like, well, why don't you teach him commands in Polish? And I feel like both the dogs respond a lot better when it comes to Polish commands. Shot, Polish, łapka, piątka, buzi, skacz, głos. I guess the majority of them. It was really interesting to learn about Otto in the beginning because, I mean, he, was, he wasn't raised by humans, he was just raised by the streets, so he plays like he, with me like he does with other dogs. So it's tug of war. Pongo's definitely social. He loves to explore and, and interact with other people on walks, he'll come up to them. Otto, I don't know, it's hard to say because the people that he's cool with that come into the house, he's obsessed with them, he wants to play with them, interact with them, so a little bit of yes and no for him. I've learned a lot of patience with dogs ever since I brought this one into my life. 
what makes me the most proud, I mean, Mark Jacobs model, hard to beat that factor. Uh, and this one, just the journey he's gone through and how much progress he's made. It still seems like he has a long way, but I've seen where he's come from. It's pretty nice to see and the fact that I can give him a home. My favorite way to spend time with these guys is honestly taking them for a hike. They listen relatively well. Actually, surprisingly, Odo more because he's, I think he's too afraid of leaving me for too long. But I mean, you just really see how happy they are. They really enjoy it. My other favorite way to spend time with the dogs is throwing the frisbee around because Pongo is obsessed. I had to bring two frisbees because as you can tell, these uh, have already been chewed through. Sometimes he gets too excited when he's running back to me and will chomp on them. He's ready to go. Hey! If he had an addiction, it would be a frisbee because we've been to the dog park and he's ignored all the other dogs. Or I'll take him to the beach. He will go for four hours and if you're not throwing the frisbee, he'll kick sand into your face. So I have a great time doing that one. I think companionship and having a dog really stands out because, I mean, like I said, they're very loyal. With my crazy schedule, having dogs like this is truly amazing because they make home actually feel like home. I mean, you have somebody excited to see you when you walk in the door. With my schedule, it's also great to have some kind of structure and somebody that depends on me when I do get home and I, you know, I have something that can take my mind off of everything else that's going on and just be able to focus in on them. I mean, Pongo literally knows when I'm about to travel. He'll start following me. He has laid on top of my suitcase. They understand more than you'll ever know and yeah, they're, they're my best friends. I have a lot of advice when it comes to owning pets. Definitely patience is the number one thing. The more work you put into them in the beginning, the less work you're gonna have to do later on down the line. Pongo I got as a puppy, which I think is definitely a lot easier from learning between the two of them. I mean, puppies are just, they just wanna learn, they follow you everywhere. But with rescues, it's a little bit harder. I think it's definitely more rewarding seeing like I tear up whenever I see the progress that he's made. He comes over and kisses me and it makes it all okay. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching Meet the Pets. Until next time. Come on. Coming up next. Oh, it's my boy. Celebratory belly rub. I have a tattoo of him, like a little outline on my leg. A big part of yeah, your Yeah, he's like a big part of my clothing. He's had over 10 pets in his life, but his favorite will always be Humphrey. Let's go meet him. This is Meet the Pets, the show that's raining cats and dogs. My name is Zach, and I'm a member of the legendary YouTube group, Too Hype. We're just a bunch of friends who love basketball and make awesome videos together. But before I blew up on YouTube, I lived on a farm in Ohio. So obviously, I've loved animals my whole life. No one knows you better than your pet. So I'm trying to meet as many of my famous friends' pets as possible. I bought $100 so worth of dog toys up for you. This is Jesse, another member of Two Hype and a trick shot king. He's got over 3 million YouTube subs and probably about that many shoes as well. He's had over 10 pets in his life, but his favorite will always be Humphrey. Let's go meet him. I'm Jesse and this is my dog Humphrey. Obviously, Humphrey is a wiener dog, but he yes. doesn't like to go by the term wiener dog. He's a miniature dachshund. He goes by Humphrey, Humps, Lump. He's got a lot of nicknames. So your mom had a pet business, so yeah. through the years, you guys have had many, many, many yeah. different types of pets. Two tortoises, six cats, like a bulldog, Frenchies, poodles, hairless dog. Humphrey belonged to my mom's friend, but Humphrey was just too much for her to take care of. So then she dropped Humphrey off, and my mom took him, and then I was only like he just nine, became but yours. I just loved him. Yeah, he just became my dog. Like, I was loved Humphrey the most out of all the dogs. <laughs> so what does a typical day for you and Humphrey look like? You know, we cuddle in the morning, yeah. obviously. I'm a big cuddler. So he sleeps with you every night? Of course, yeah. Right beside you? Ever since I met him. <laughs> just, I've always had him with me. He's just like part of the bed. But I bring Humphrey everywhere I go. So like I, when I go to my house, I bring Humphrey. And then he still plays outside. He has a good amount of energy. But his favorite thing is food and sleeping. He doesn't I think you're kind of spoiled with the bed. Him. Yeah, Humphrey's like the perfect dog for me. I wouldn't want any other breed. Just have I can't believe you. Humphrey took this burger out of a trash can. I feed you more than enough. Are you gonna say anything, Humphrey? All right, Jesse, now we're gonna do something called Zach's Pet Challenge. Okay. All right, so I have three challenges for Humphrey. We're gonna see if he can complete them. Easy, huh? The first one is sit, okay? So stand up, sit, 
Good boy. Instinct. Humphrey actually graduated from Good Boy University. All right, he's one for one. Yes, sir. The next trick is gonna be stay. Ready? Stay. 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 <laughs> okay, get it. He doesn't know come, he only knows stay. Oh, so he's just gonna stay forever? <laughs> well, I mean, eventually. Okay, that counts. <laughs> that counts. <laughs> Let's go home. All right, he's two for two right now. Yes, sir. This last challenge is the hardest one. He's gotta catch the tree out of the air. He'll catch both of them. Humphrey, you ready? This is your chance, okay? <laughs> Let's go! Oh, okay, Humphrey. one more. Oh, oh, wow. That's my boy. Celebratory belly rub. <laughs> belly rubs. Humphrey is actually getting really old. He's turning into a grandpa. My boy is turning gray. She's literally been with me for the past 13 years. My boy, I love you so much, Humphrey. Humphrey is the greatest dog of all time. What is like one main thing that you've learned from having a pet? I would say the main thing I learned about Humphrey is definitely responsibility, especially after I moved out. Cause my dad used to feed him, take care of him, like take him out. He really helped me mature and become an adult faster. You didn't have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> I love them, so I gotta do it. So playing basketball and stuff like that, taking him outside is kind of hard because he's an escape yeah, he artist. He likes to escape, like yeah. at the house we had before this. He wouldn't always be able to fit through the fence. Like, you know, I could let him out there without worry. But then this dude lost mad weight purposely so he could fit through the fence. And then every time I bring him outside, if I lose track of him for like two minutes, like he's always out of my eyesight and just goes through the fence. So goes he was down fitting the trail, through the gotta, fence. I don't know why he does it. Like, what do you gain? <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> Adventures, man. So Humphrey, he's been around for a long time. What's like the craziest story? The, the moment I was most scared, I would say, is we had a party at my house growing up and there's a big creek in my back, like behind the fence in my backyard. And you know, there's always coyotes. Like we had coyotes jump over the fence, and literally attack one of our dogs. But So I'd always get so scared, like having Humphrey outside. I don't know how he got out of the party. People leave doors open, but he went all the way down to the creek and it's like ivy, like this high. In the middle of midnight, just looking for Humphrey through this guy, <laughs> this creek and he's like in this weird cave section just sitting there. Just I can't chilling. believe I found him. So if Humphrey could talk, what do you think he would say about you? Well, I mean, I, Humphrey views me like, you know, I'm the top of his respect list, 100%. Like, I, I, I'm always with him, like, he loves me more than anything. Like, he just gets always so excited to see me. He's very loving, so I think, you know, it'd just be like at the top of his love list. And then I have a tattoo of him, like a little outline on my leg. And then yeah. all my merch, like I'm dropping a, a shirt with just an outline of the tattoo of Humphrey. And he's been, he's been like on a ton of he's my He's a merch. pretty big part of yeah, your merch. Yeah, he's like a big part of my clothing, like, He's my best friend. I just want to say Humphrey's always been so loyal to me and all the pets I've had, just always loyal. So I think it really, you know, makes me look at my own life and I want to be loyal to all the people around me. So Humphrey, thank you for that. Mm -hmm.